So I would love if you guys could give a warm Calvary Assembly welcome to the one and only Madeline Warburton. Come on up, Madeline. Hi, I'm Madeline Warburton, and I'm 16. I'm a homeschool sophomore, and I'm a classic firstborn. I like the rule book. I like to know what I can and cannot do. And I'm a perfectionist. I like to have things just so. As the oldest sibling, I like to consider myself the mature and responsible one. My younger siblings are, well, that's for another time. I've been reading scripture and my devotionals, and I've noticed God does not follow the rules, the world's set of rules. I would never consider God a rule breaker, but the Bible is full of him doing the complete opposite of what people expected of him. God picked the most unqualified, least important, unexpected people to lead his nation, to be disciples and prophets, and be world changers. God picked Abraham to start the family of God, and he was physically too old to have children. God chose Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and to be, <laughs> and to, um, how awkward this is. <laughs> God, chose the, uh, God chose Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and to confront Pharaoh, one of the most powerful men at his time, and he had never been eloquent at speaking. God, picked, God, picked, God chose David, a shepherd boy, to be, be king over Israel, and he didn't have the looks or the muscles to be considered a king. God was a rebel. He was breaking all the standards the world has set for people to follow. And Jesus really didn't come to earth with extravagant splendor. People expected Jesus to come as royalty, with all the right connections, the skill sets, the looks, everything. Jesus was born to an unmarried teen girl in a dirty and smelly barn in a town she wasn't living in since she was with her fiancé to fill the census that was being taken. The guests I know were dirty, unimportant shepherds and wise men who were working for a king who was out to kill Jesus. Nothing of what people expected. How beautifully holy and special that night was. Jesus grew up as a carpenter and began his ministry in the most unexpected ways. He talked with the sick, the poor, the prostitutes, and the outcasts. Not only that, he healed them. He told parables that encouraged some and offended others, like the Pharisees, religiously, people who were religiously important men who highly valued their roles. Jesus wasn't like, oh, Pharisees are here. I have to be careful what I say and do so I won't break one of their hundreds of rules. Or Jesus wasn't like, oh, there's a sick person who needs me. I'll come back after dark and heal that man so nobody be shocked by my awesome God-given powers. No, Jesus said what had to be said and done. He ignored the standards of their society. He was marching to a very different beat than the world was used to. In one story, we see Jesus talking to this woman who was an outcast and a prostitute. And he was talking about living water. Jesus was talking about himself in the sense that he knew that she was craving for something that wealth, fame, knowledge, or anything else could fill. He knew that she was lost and looking for something substantial to quench her thirst and fill this void in her heart. And Jesus knew he was the only one who could fill it. The woman was confused. She thought Jesus was talking about the physical water from the well. Maybe she thought Jesus had invented his wonder water that was packed with all the nutrients and vitamins you needed to have a terrific day that only had 11 calories. <laughs> it was even better than that. From the very beginning, God is breathing a fresh breath of air into the earth which so many people haven't heard of. It is this refreshing, freeing, bold word, grace. God has lavished his love over us with the gift of his wild, bold, refreshing grace. His reckless love has pursued us all the way to the cross just because we are his beloved. And he has poured his grace on our lives, which means we don't have to live up to the standards of this world. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be terrified of failing. With God's lavish love and abundant grace, we don't have to strive to earn our worth. It has already been given to us. And that's what Jesus was telling this woman. And when she understood she received it with open arms, and it changed her life. It made her come alive. I'm not going to lie, this is hard for me, especially since I'm a classic firstborn who values following the rules. It's hard for me to accept something that I didn't work for, didn't earn, and don't deserve. But I'm learning to accept this incredible gift, and I'll be proud of learning this for the rest of my life.
But to receive this gift, it is freeing. It is a wild, bold, and refreshing life I'm going to pursue. Receiving this gift makes me come alive. Thank you. Yeah.